All right, we're about to enter the high Exclusive. Behind this highly secured door in an ASML clean room, there's a giant $400 million machine. It's bigger than a double-decker bus. Made with such closely protected technical specificity. Very complex, the most advanced machine tool in history. That no filming's right. ever been allowed, even by ASML's own team, until we yeah, flew across the minutes. world to see. We're here at ASML's headquarters in the Netherlands where 100% of the world's extreme ultraviolet lithography machines are made, and now the next generation machines called high na We had to wear these bunny suits to protect these extremely precise machines from getting contaminated by our own hair and skin cells. This is high numerical aperture, high na the new generation of EUV machines, the only machines in the world capable of printing nanoscopic blueprints onto the most advanced chips. NVIDIA, Apple, Taiwan Semiconductor, Samsung, Intel, None of their advanced chips can be made without EUV. And this company has that market completely cornered. The first high na machine was installed in the U.S. at Intel's Oregon Chip Fabrication Plant, or FAB, last year. Only five have ever been shipped. Indeed, the machine is so big you can't ship them once, so we break them into uh, parts. Now they're being ramped up to make millions of chips on the factory floors of the few companies that can afford them, Intel, TSMC, and Samsung. ASML says eventually high na will be used by all its EUV customers, other advanced chip makers like Micron, SK Hynix, and Rapidus. Without EUV, without very advanced logic manufacturing, most probably AI cannot happen. CNBC went from ASML's labs care. in California all the way to its Veldhoven, Netherlands headquarters to bring you this never-before-seen look at the world's most advanced chip-making machine and to ask its makers exactly how it works and what could go wrong amidst Trump's tariffs, export controls, and a new training facility coming to the U.S. What's that saying? What's that saying? MD, fire. Meow. What's that saying? Bad weapon. Suited up and through an air shower. It's basically it's to blow up all the contamination from your suit. You. Can I now, I want to see the suit of chips in itself, you know what I'm saying? Aware? The whole system needs to be in a vacuum. This tiny thread may look like the strand of a spider web, but it's actually molten tin being shot out at 50,000 droplets a second. The tin droplets are vaporized with a laser, and those tiny explosions are what emit photons of EUV light. This is called a CO2 laser. It's been used in the car industry for many years. They would cut through steel with one of these. We use huh? four of them to shoot at one of these tiny tin droplets to generate a plasma, which is hotter than the sun. That plasma generates EUV, and that EUV is captured by this collector, Miro, that comes from size and brings the light into our scanner. The light bounces off of mirrors that aim it through the lens, much like how a camera works. But because EUV gets absorbed by typical mirrors, German optics company Zeiss made specific mirrors well, just for ASML that? that are the flattest man-made surfaces in the world. And then the light is emitted through the projection optics onto the wafer, which is about here. So this is the wafer table. When the EUV finally hits photoresist oh. chemicals on the surface of the silicon wafer, it prints the minuscule blueprint that makes up the chip. The aim needs to be so precise, TSMC says it's equivalent to shining a laser from the moon to hit a coin on the Earth. Why? EUV made up less than 8% of ASML's total number of machines sold in 2024. What the fuck? 44 EUV machines versus 374 cheaper DUV machines. But with a price tag of $220 million, EUV made up 38% of ASML's system sales revenue. But the cost of the chips the tool is going to create is going down. Because you're the only company in the world that makes these machines, what's stopping you from setting the price even higher? Well, what stops us is Moore's law says that we need to continue to drive costs down. It's allowing huh? you to go to the next. I thought that was that was. And then the next. Yo, 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 when are like you um, in in Florida? If this was to stop, then everyone gets Defunct, stuck. Defunct, no? ASML began developing I, its latest $400 million high NA machines around 2016. Inside, all the same processes still happen with the same EUV light source, but there's one I key difference. My, my, we my, my increase head. the aperture of the opening angle of the lens. High NA stands for high numerical aperture, meaning it has a larger lens opening, increasing the angle at which the light is captured by the mirrors. 
More light coming in from steeper angles allows high NA machines to capture increasingly small Wait. designs on chip masks. So, chat, are they the only who can make this chip? Nobody else? So they can be projected in one exposure step. Aren't Whereas these guys that can up somewhere? NA machines reach higher resolution to project these tiny designs using multiple exposures through multiple masks. One become two, then two become three, three become four. And when the number increases, it gets very complex process wise and the yield goes down. Chat. But with they make machines NA, or they make the chip improves, um, And the small designs the can be printed only. with fewer masks, saving time and money. The larger the number, the smaller the thing you can print. Mm. But this higher NA also comes with a much higher price tag for one main reason. The higher. But they sell machines for people to make their own chips? DNA of an optic, the bigger the mirror you have to use, and therefore the bigger the system. Oh, wow. These machines also take up a huge amount of power. How much power do these machines take? I think they take too much. If we don't improve the power efficiency of our AI chips over time, the training of uh, the models could consume the entire worldwide energy. And that could happen around 2035. Since the moment we started EUV, 2018, what? We have reduced the power, the energy needed per wafer exposure by more than 60%. ASML says its machines print about 200 wafers per hour, 24-7, yeah, 365. Yeah. The goal is several hundred per hour. You can print, at the end of the day, millions of these wafers per year. At a conference in February, Intel said it started making chips with HiNA, using it for some 30,000 wafers so far, and that it's about twice as reliable as previous models. And Samsung said HiNA could reduce its cycle time by 60%. HiNA means two things. First and foremost, shrink. So isn't Intel just literally just GG? Like, aren't they absolutely out of the race? No move your reach and vitus. So there's more Let's devices in the field. And secondly, no? by avoiding multiple patterning, you can make them faster and you can make them with higher yield. In reality, every chip is made using multiple different lithography techniques at different resolutions. Every chip consists out of like a hundred different Nvidia layers. Saved them. Most of the layers are actually made. Does, does that mean that we're going to get AMD CPU? Which is a much smaller system. Legacy DUV machines sell for less, $5 million to $90 million, but still make up over half of ASML sales. The older machines are in high demand. Many oh, of no, the I mean, in the, uh, uh, Nvidia CPUs, right? The chips we use in our daily Nvidia life CPU? do not require EUV. If you press the button to open the window in your car, unlikely an EV-based chip is needed. Turns out ASML sells a lot of its legacy machines to China, although U.S. export controls prevent it from selling EUV there. It's a ban that started under the first Trump administration. The Trump administration is very focused on ensuring that... Chad, what, if, Chad, what, what if NVIDIA invested to Intel and then they make their own CPU and now they have CPU, GPU, right? And they can make their own... All of it. And the people don't have to do it to multiple competitors. And they can just monopoly the whole thing, no? China does not get access to the most advanced tools and chips that are required to power AI. So without access to ASML's EUV machines, could China develop its own? I feel like it's a real long shot that China could enter this space. Yeah. But right now, China's really figuring out ways to take things like 7 nanometer, the most advanced nodes that can be done without EUV and figuring out ways to scale them. And they've been able to do that successfully in some areas, like in smartphones and personal devices. Still, export controls haven't stopped China from stockpiling ASML's less advanced machines. At one point recently, up to 49% of your business was in China. What happened there and, and what is that number at now? We had a huge backlog in China because we got order in 2022 at the peak of the market. And in 2023, 24, the rest of the world kind of went down. So basically we could use our capacity to fulfill this backlog. End of 24, last quarter, the part of China in our business went down to 30%. US concern over advanced tech making its way to China has accelerated amidst the generative AI race. But that boom has also sent demand for chips and the machines that make them soaring. And with it, chip stocks, including ASMLs, which hit an all-time high in July. Still, it's declined some sense as the chip industry faces uncertainties. Some. Chief among them, Trump's tariffs. Dude, some. Buddy. Buddy. What the f***? Bro, down 60%. It's XQC back down to 20% efficiency. The f Any idea how tariffs are going to impact ASML? Well, the short answer is, I don't know, we, we don't know, and if anybody would know, you could make a lot of money. 
would be known. In its first quarter earnings reported last month, ASML missed on order expectations amid tariff uncertainty. I suspect ASML will come in and advocate for a very low to minimal to no tariff on their machines. Right. The impact of tariffs is complicated have that much leverage, by though? ASML's complex web of 800 global suppliers and the winding worldwide path ASML's machines take before arriving in a fab. Each high NA machine is made up of four subsystems, manufactured in Connecticut, Germany, the Netherlands, and California. Each module is shipped separately to ASML's headquarters in Veldhoven, where they're put together, tested, then disassembled again. Oh, bound for not fabs on American soil. Like hey, 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 no, no, no. Frequently Asia. How do you, you ship bring that back home, home, back on yeah, American it soil, takes buddy? About seven Boeing 747s to ship this whole thing, and it's about 25 to 30 trucks. For years, Asia has made up more than 80% of ASML's business. But the U.S. share, around 17% in 2024, is growing fast. Especially as Intel builds new chip fabs in Ohio and Arizona, and TSMC is now in volume production in Arizona, too. So there's a lot of cheap customer in the U.S. So there's, a, I would say, a good reason to have cheap manufacturing. When we first got a look at EUV in 2022, ASML had about 32. I still don't get it yet. Um, these chips end up making what though? Like, did they make what the customer wants, whatever? Like, did they make it for, who did, who did they work for? 2,000 employees. Today, that number's grown to 44,000, and 8,500 of them are in the US. Like Eric Ma, who's been with ASML in San Jose, California for 18 plus years. Everything. Have you gotten to see the high NA machines? Yes. What is it like? Oh, it's a huge. Of ASML's 60 global offices, 18 of them are in the U.S., including a manufacturing site in Connecticut and R&D sites in San Diego and here in San Jose. We're here at ASML's Silicon Valley, California location, and behind me is a metrology machine. This one has 25 beams of electrons that are used to test the different microchips oh, I don't to make sure that the just relocate to the U.S. and then on the fucking tariffs or whatever. For high NA in the U.S., it's likely that Arizona could be a major hub. Many of ASML's first high NA shipments went to Intel last year, and the struggling U.S.-based chip maker is built. Oh, 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 is that one now? For high NA in the U.S., it's likely that Arizona could be a major hub. Many of ASML's first high NA shipments went to Intel last year, and the struggling U.S.-based chip maker is building a giant new chip fab in Chandler, Arizona. Intel has been, for many years, a formidable partner for uh, ASML. We're the first company to believe in EUV and the first company to work with us to develop EUV. They have done the same on INA. And I think that moving forward, the role of Intel... Yeah, uh, so, so buddy, how do you explain when my f chip started melting in my PC? How about that? How about... How about you fucking explain why, why my Intel sh fucking started melting it like the US, out of nowhere uh, and, and it made it unusable? And on so that, explain that. It's still very critical. But TSMC is not a joke. It actually, bro, it actually happened. Chip notes. We recently visited TSMC's new fab north of Phoenix, the most advanced chip fab on U.S. soil. The need for high NA there will likely come soon. With ASML's Yo, original, it was beef. proven by science scientifics that it was not a skill issue. It was an actual chip issue. The, the 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 chip had problems with the self-regulating temperature readers and it, and it was cooking the chip. It was the cooking. Machines in use now. In order to hook one up requires something over 2,000 electrical connections, over two kilometers of oh, okay. cabling, 100,000 parts, 40,000 bolts. We're talking about massive. With so many EUV machines in Arizona, ASML is, for the first time, bringing a training facility to the U.S. Its only other training centers are in the Netherlands, Taiwan, and Korea. We're planning to open that in the next few months in Arizona with the idea that we could train 1,200 people every year on EUV, DPUV. As chipmaking shows no signs of slowing in the U.S. or elsewhere, ASML is already hard at work on its next-generation machine, HyperNA with an even larger NA that can print even smaller features. I heard it could be up to $700 million. Do you have any? It's kind of crazy. You make a massive machine, you have to immediately start working on a new one because it's almost instantly obsolete no? The uh, price uh, Oh, it's way too early to mention the number, but typically price goes up. So no, I don't think it's going to be that high. 
Despite market headwinds, Fouquet told CNBC that customers will need HyperNA within 10 years. Anything you can tell us about HyperNA? How far away are we from seeing that? For us, it's not necessarily a difficult product. We need our customer to need it as well. And if you look at the roadmap of our customer, I think the need for HyperNA. So AMD always has problems too. Yo, don't even miss, oh, AMD, AMD. Yo, AMD also has always other problems with compatibility with motherboard and RAM and other shit. Don't give me this shit. You guys don't know anything about computers. AMD is so f annoying. Like, I hate both of them Two equally. In 2000. Well, more Intel, but. But for now, ASML is focused on meeting demand for high NA. It plans to ship at least five more systems this year, ramping to a production capacity of 20 machines in a few years. Well, this Hi, is a monopoly right here and today. And in the era of AI, smile. there will be I hope you new vehicles for building semiconductors. Ja, and how do you stop a monopoly if the, if the price of entry is too hard and you need too much tech to even have a chance of getting in? How do you stop a monopoly? You can't stop a monopoly. They have the better product. What about it? And if I'm ASML from any other company in this space, I'm being careful to make sure that I'm protecting my position, not just in the near term, but in the long term as well. Uh, the government can split the company. It got broken to different companies. Shouldn't there be exceptions to monopolies? If they have not, some monopolies are fine, no? Competition drives innovation. True. True. But also, if you cut somebody's legs when they're doing at their best, you're also cutting progress as well. Like what if you tell a company that's balling out, doing good? Like, oh, you, oh, you can't do it because you know, I mean, then what? And then what?